Michael, um, this desert ash here, very thin at the moment, but we know there's a lot of them. Um, can you tell us about why this is such an invasive weed? Yeah, desert ash is uh, uh, a, a pretty bad environmental weed, especially on waterways. Um, and a lot of it has to do with uh, not only the way it grows, but the way it reproduces. So the seed that, that is produced by desert ash is produced on mass. There's lots and lots of seed. They're a really large, robust seed with a really big um, uh, embryo on the inside, which enables the seed to, to get a really good foothold very quickly. So yeah. um, as soon as that first root, the radical comes out of the seed, um, it goes straight down into the ground and, and within a matter of days we've got a, a quite a lengthy taproot holding this plant in place. Um, the seed is quite large and robust and can move along waterways as well. It's, it is winged on one side so it, it mm. does sort of mm. move like a helicopter through the wind when it's dropped from adult, adult trees, uh, gets into the waterways and moves along and then germinates in the creek banks. Um, because it's so robust and so fast growing it gets up above the other weed layer so it competes quite well with other weeds um, and then forms this really dense canopy to the exclusion of all other plants. Um, it's a really strong plant, really robust, strong growing plant and very difficult to eradicate once it's in. Um, and yeah, the best way to do that is when it's young. So if you can identify this plant mm. uh, when it's young, uh, it's, it's a much easier proposition to remove than when it's a, a full grown tree. So a small plant you could yank it out if you know if you see it um, when it's little yeah Otherwise often often if you see one small plant you'll see yeah. many of them so yeah. there'll be hundreds or thousands of small plants all germinating at the same time uh, and yes it's much easier when they're really small and we're talking quite small so less than about 20 centimeters or so once it gets up above that the taproot tends to be so deeply embedded that it's almost impossible to remove by hand mm. and it needs to be removed by other means. So we would recommend um, cutting and painting with a herbicide um, just to kill that rootstock and not disturb the soil when you're pulling it out as well. Mm. Because as we know, um, when we disturb the soil profile, we get more weeds coming oh, in yes. with available nitrogen yeah. and disturbed site. So yeah. So you talked about um, dense foliage and, and that um, other uh, flora can't grow around it. What about fauna? Is, do birds like it? Does it have a seed? Uh, the only a... birds that really use it are some of the introduced birds like oh. blackbirds. Um, so they use that as, as shelter. Um, the, the fact that it's a deciduous tree also along our waterways is a big issue. So each year um, we get this mass shedding of leaves uh, which end up in the waterway and then the breakdown of that uh, those leaves in the waterway can, can remove um, available oxygen and then lower the the oxygen level so oh. it, it has a, a sort of a follow-on effect um, to everything living in the waterway as well as the stuff above it so yeah okay thank you